Joe with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Today we're at the beautiful Pariso Hotel or Hosteria here in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. You can probably hear the pool behind us in the fountain. It's just a beautiful sunny day and uh, what a great location to be at to do this interview with my good friend Nick Basie. Hi everybody. Nick, welcome. Glad you're here today, man. Good to be here, Joe. Uh, under difficult circumstances, but good to be here nonetheless. Yeah, we really want to talk to you today about what Nick is doing. He's uh, has put a letter together to go to the president of Ecuador. And I'm not going to say too much about it. I'm going to let Nick jump right into it. Um, where to start? Uh, probably a fair backdrop for this uh, situation is um, talking about the law and order situation in Ecuador, generally speaking. Uh, we have uh, a situation in Ecuador that's been increasingly bad during the pandemic uh, response and uh, since. Uh, as the economic situation of a lot of people here deteriorated and uh, it made it a little, a little simpler for some of the uh, cartel uh, organizations to uh, recruit. And that gang violence, which is kind of uh, endemic up and down various parts of the coast, uh, has seemed to bleed into the Sierra somewhat uh, over the last uh, 6 to 12 months. So we've seen an uptick in uh, what they would call insecurity here, which is uh, basically criminal activity. And uh, that is affecting the perception, uh, rightly so, of uh, foreigners who are uh, looking at Ecuador. Uh, and also it's affecting foreign investment. It's affecting the state of mind of uh, not just the extranjeros, not just the expats that are living here, but also the locals, the people in the... Uh, the locals in Vilcabamba and the surrounding valleys are really, really concerned about the uptick in uh, in criminal activity, essentially. So that's about the that's the situation we find ourselves in, and uh, uh, we are trying to do something about that right now. So Nick has uh, put together a letter that um, we're all signing here, business owners, you know, both expats and locals alike, and that's going to go up to the president of Ecuador, President Lasso. And it's our plea for a little bit more help down here to preserve law and order. And um, I'm going to put a, a photo of that letter up here on the screen so you'll be able to read it for yourself. Yep. Um, we had a particularly uh, serious uh, incident here uh, a couple of, a week and a half, two weeks ago now. Um, and that was kind of, uh, in many respects, I think it's fair to say that that was the straw that broke the camel's back and made people realize that if we don't uh, uh, somehow manifest a serious and visible uh, response, uh, then uh, to a large extent things could deteriorate hard and fast uh, uh, thereafter without it. Uh, so I uh, spoke with a couple of uh, people in the village and then spoke to one of the, a friend of mine who who's uh, been here, whose family were one of the first families to start Vilcabamba 160 odd years ago and uh, wanted to get pick his brain a little bit and find out what the most powerful thing that uh, we might be able to do as a community of both uh, foreigners and uh, Ecuadorians uh, to be able to make a little noise uh, across the levels of uh, Ecuadorian government. Uh, both at the national level and the provincial level. Uh, and that idea turned into a collaborative letter, uh, which there'll be a link to uh, here, I'm sure, uh, once we finish this interview. Uh, and I have spent the last four days uh, collecting signatures, the first couple of days collecting any, any residents or citizens or of uh, Ecuadorian or foreign, doesn't matter, uh, getting those signatures. In the last couple of days, I spent talking to all the businesses uh, that are central to Vilcabamba. And obviously, the locals here realize that uh, with, a, with an uptick in crime comes a downtick uh, in uh, the economy. Generally speaking, there's a trickle-down effect and it's immediate. 
so I have had an enormous response and a very enthusiastic response from uh, from expats and uh, Vilka Bambense alike uh, and it's been very good to see that. So I'm finished today actually, uh, just uh, before I came here to see Joe, I finished collecting uh, all of the signatures that we need and uh, that will be being packaged up uh, this afternoon, this evening and being sent off to my friend in Quito, uh, Manuel Vivanco, uh, who will be uh, helping present that directly to the hands of the President of Ecuador. All right, so that's the situation here, and um, we want to be sure that people aren't afraid to come to Vilcabamba, that they're not afraid to come here on vacation, and that they're not afraid to look at Vilcabamba as a place to retire. Um, we still think it's a good place, and we want to ensure that for the future. So that's our purpose of uh, getting involved with this. Yeah, I, I'd like to, I mean, I should point out a, a few things. Uh, having been here 15 years, um, I've spent a, a lot of time looking at the state of affairs in the rest of the world. And uh, a couple of years ago, a few people were asking me if I was going to go uh, somewhere else, where would I go? And even, you know, with the challenges that we face here sometimes uh, in a country like Ecuador, uh, I, really, I really was struggling to think of a place where it's going to be so much better that it would be worth the effort, the time and effort to, to actually uproot myself and, and relocate. And that situation has only deteriorated further in a geopolitical sense uh, uh, worldwide uh, at, the, at the moment. And uh, Ecuador, I mean, as you've said in previous videos, I think there are some protocols uh, that people can follow, which is always going to ameliorate or at least lessen the chances of uh, these kinds of things happening. But uh, having said that, uh, the, the objective of this uh, video is basically to try to uh, paint uh, as clear a picture as it's possible for you guys out there who are, who are perhaps not here in Vilcabamba or perhaps not even in Ecuador, uh, that uh, precautions do need to be taken and there is uh, a law and order uh, situation here. And uh, the actions that we've taken over the last uh, four or five days uh, with this letter uh, hopefully are going to have a positive effect such that we move a little bit out of the dark and the anger and the grief and into the light a little bit and hopefully take something positive and steer this in a in a in a in a better direction um, because uh, we have to try right um, and the copy of this letter is going to be going to uh, numerous other officials at both the national and provincial level of government in Ecuador uh, and that is going to be a signal to action, a call to action if you like uh, and uh, we can just cross our fingers and hope that making a little bit of noise through the media and through the official channels is going to direct some some positive results here from the government. So yeah I think that's really the summary uh, of the situation, what we're trying to do, or what we've act not what we're trying to do, what we've actually done this last uh, four or five days, is pull together the uh, expat community uh, in combination with the uh, Vilcabamba community, and put together a letter that's very powerful, and that has everyone's signatures from all walks of life uh, uh, here in Vilcabamba. And with any luck, uh, we are going to make a positive impact from the highest level, right down the pyramid of uh, political authority, uh, and perhaps via the media as well, if we get some exposure there. So that's, that's it. Well, that's our hope, and we'll keep you informed. We'll let you know what happens. Um, we're going to try to bring you the best information that we can. Um, sometimes information here gets a little turned around, but uh, we'll try to verify stuff before we report to you on it. And we'll let you know. Hope you enjoy the video. Give us a thumbs up. Ciao for now. Bye, everybody.